May 29th, 1953. A day, a place and a moment I'll never forget. And yet, as I think back on it now, trying to recall exactly how I felt, I remember, even above my tiredness, how wild and beautiful it was. There's a special excitement in discovery, be at the top of a mountain or just coming back home. And there's no place in the world I'd rather come home to than the land of the long white cloud, my own New Zealand. I'm sure most of us have a special feeling about our own country. It's where our roots are, where we belong. Yet nothing, even home, ever remains exactly the same. People, places and things constantly change. New opportunities, new concerns, new challenges, all contribute to an ever-altering reflection of not only what we are, but what we hope to be. Here in New Zealand, one small element of that changing reflection are the now more than 40,000 members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, better known to many of us as Mormons. They've asked me to tell you a little bit about themselves, who they are, and some of the things they believe. And although I have no formal religious beliefs myself, I accept there is much that is admirable in the basic philosophy of all religions. As for the Mormons, well, history tells us that their first missionaries arrived here in New Zealand in 1854. By 1900, their number had increased to 5,100. And by midway through the 20th century, there were nearly 12,000. Today, though still comparatively small in number, the church continues to grow, having nearly doubled in size in the past 10 years alone. Among members of the church are men and women from all walks of life, one of whom is the outstanding bush country artist Ray Harmon, whose brilliant work has been exhibited throughout the world. You know, one of the main um, principles, church principles, that we believe in is the respect and reverence for God-given things and, and life itself. And when you look at the art, all that's happening is I'm amplifying my, my feelings, you know, towards these principles. As a lifelong member of the church, Harmon has always aspired to excellence. Quite accidentally, he stumbled upon his unique style of tiny dot drawing after an injury took his livelihood from him. Now he spends almost all his time depicting the bush country he has loved so deeply for so long. It's the partnership. And what is the partnership? The Lord is one, my wife, and my babies, and you children are the others. I Ray has taught Sunday, Sunday school for 20 time. years and says it continues to be one of his most rewarding experiences. You all will try it? Okay. One of the finest things is to be able to say to your teacher or to your mother or to your dad, I've done my very best. You know, I never, ever fail to get down on my knees and just have a little prayer, maybe two minutes, maybe ten minutes, maybe three minutes, only me and the Lord, to thank Him for the great blessing that I've got. For my eyes, you know, and the hand and the blessing of, of the art. To me, it's my mission.
When Queen Elizabeth toured New Zealand during her Silver Jubilee in 1976, the government highly complimented Ray by presenting the Queen with one of his art pieces, an honour he considers the highlight of his life. Another member of the church is this man, you'll all no doubt recognise as a former outstanding player for the All Blacks. His name is Sid Going. And although he's now retired from international play, he still leads a most active life. Sid and his family live on a farm in the back country. Having been a famous athlete himself, he knows only too well the benefits of keeping physically fit. In the church, we have this law called the word of wisdom. We do not drink or we don't smoke. We don't drink tea or coffee. And the reason is they're detrimental to your health. You know, living this law has helped me tremendously in my rugby career and, and I think in my general health in my life. When I grow, you know, older and I look back over my life, really I think the satisfaction that I will get will be my family. Really look at my children to see how I've been able to teach them and how they've been able to progress and how we are together as a family. I guess rugby interfered a lot in, in a lot of ways because uh, I was away from my family quite a bit. So I'm trying to make up for it a bit more now. Now, Heavenly Father, we thank thee for this food. And as thou blessed it may be good for our bodies in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Our family life really now is involved all around the church. We're by no means perfect, but we strive to do things together as a family now. And we all have that same goal in mind. The one thing, you know, about the church, you can run it down, you can do what you like, but it always teaches us good things, and if we live it, we will be good people. I believe all people have got inborn talents. Um, the church is very, very interested in bringing out the best uh, of these talents within individuals. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Today I'm going to talk on the abundant life. In our church, we have an abundance of many things to help us, especially friends. In Sunday school, it teaches our children for a, in a two-and-a-half-minute talk and it allows the children to get up and express themselves. This is part of teaching our children. We've got to teach them how to pray and to walk uprightly before our Heavenly Father. In their firm belief that the world's greatest natural resource is its youth, Mormon children are given many opportunities to expand and develop their character and talents, be it giving a short talk in Sunday school, acting in a play, or singing in the choir. The ultimate goal is to instill self-esteem, confidence, and a strong conviction. We're going to have a story about... Because of the church, I think our children have a higher set of principles. And I think it also helps us as parents to be able to, to teach them and helps them also in their everyday life, I think, in the decisions that they have to make. Do you hear me, Father? Bless the classroom. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. Amen. The church has, for many years, been one of the largest worldwide supporters of the Boy Scout program. A program whose basic ideals, physical fitness, citizenship, moral integrity, and a firm religious conviction, harmonize perfectly with church objectives. Here in New Zealand, 
young men within the church are challenged to set high lifetime goals. And scouting is considered a most important contributing influence in helping them to better understand themselves as well as their fellow human beings. Service has always been a major emphasis of the church. Service to each other, service to humanity. These young people are participating in just such a project as they'll be called upon many times in their lives to do. Whether it's painting a home, building a chapel, reading stories to handicapped children, or simply being a special friend. Young Latter-day Saints learn that giving of themselves not only brings joy to the receiver, but even more richly blesses the giver. One of the scriptures of the church says the glory of God is intelligence. And when you couple that with the Savior's teachings that we should be perfect even as our Father in heaven is perfect, it impresses upon me that I've got to take advantage of every opportunity to develop myself intellectually. And of course, that's not just true for me, it's true for all Latter-day Saints. With the competition for good jobs being what it is today, I appreciate the church for encouraging us to get as much education as possible. I think it's good that we're asked to keep certain moral principles and mix with people who have the same ideals as we do. And it's easy to maintain these high standards if, there's, if other people feel the same. This is a rare institution in that those kinds of things are valued in a world that has discredited, I think, the idea of, of uh, morality and kind of standards that individuals may have. And uh, that was important to me. Education uh, for we who are Mormons in New Zealand is, is vitally important because we've got to get our students into good trades, into good professions, and for church leadership as well. Latter-day Saints continue to place great emphasis on education. And here in New Zealand, no better evidence of that commitment can be found than in the results it's achieved. Right on, Murray. Most local Latter-day Saint leaders hold regular jobs in addition to their church responsibilities. Up. 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 Here in New Zealand, Bishop Douglas Meeklin, a convert to the church, is the leader of a Mormon congregation in the Wellington area. My job at present is training of police dogs. Uh, supporting the government, of course, is one of the main uh, doctrines of the church. So that works in quite well with my particular job. Um, the church itself believes in the uh, supporting and sustaining the law. When I'm not working uh, here at the dog training center, I am a bishop in the church uh, in the Heritonga Ward. I can never read the third chapter of Acts without being affected by it. It up until uh, oh, nearly three years ago, uh, I was a member of the congregation. I would sit in church and uh, listen to the speakers and so forth. Now my position um, entails that I arrange and uh, conduct the various uh, meetings of the church. Uh, we don't, of course, get um, paid for it. The ministry is entirely a, a lay ministry. The reason that I do it is a question of commitment. I believe firmly that the church is true. Worthy Latter-day Saint men hold the priesthood. Women also have a powerful, although more subtle, influence. I don't feel at all stifled being a mother or a housewife. We are encouraged to develop our talents right from the time we're little girls. We are encouraged to go to school to further our education and to be recognised in the world as women and Relief Society is where we learn all of this. The Church's Relief Society program 
helps women to more fully realize their potential through expanding their opportunities. Continuing lessons include religion, cultures of other countries, motherhood, creative homemaking, and how to deal with the pressures of contemporary living. The church is everything that I've ever wanted. It's given me security. With the church, I have something to believe in and to strive for. And you also know that if you live the gospel, that you can obtain temple marriage, and it sort of keeps you going to obtain your goal. A civil service, a normal marriage, uh, they actually use the wording, till death do you part. And in other words, they, they're thinking straight away that uh, once you die, the marriage is annulled, you're divorced virtually. And our own ceremony, we believe it's to last forever. So there's the difference, really. Uh, one is for law, and this one's for Heavenly Father. That's the most important thing for us. We wanted to be sealed together for eternity, and also we wanted our children to be sealed to us. The Latter-day Saints share a belief in eternal marriage and the timeless bonding together of the family. They feel this creates a continuing environment of mutual support, understanding and love. We believe there is more to life than just this life, that we, will, we can be together eternally as a family. The feeling of the eternal nature of the family is one of the greatest things in my life. I'm proud of my wife, I'm proud of my family, and I hope to keep them with me throughout all eternity. With their rather unique emphasis on family, tracing their family history is a labor of love for all Mormons. And many can identify their ancestors back several generations. These records, nearly one billion of them, are permanently stored in vaults located deep within a granite mountain in Salt Lake City, Utah. We do genealogy in the church because we like to know who our ancestors are. And we do our genealogy so that we can find these people and be baptized for them so that they will have a chance in the afterlife. It's really exciting when you find someone that you've hunted for maybe for years. And if you do it now while you remember things, then it becomes clearer when your children read them. Even though the Mormon church is a worldwide religion, it seeks to complement each individual culture in which it is found. Its concepts of a strong family, love for country, and righteous living have inspired a substantial growth not only in church membership here in New Zealand, but in the number of chapels which enhance our countryside. As the fastest growing church organization in New Zealand, we have a unique responsibility and a unique challenge. Uh, as the church area architect, it's my role to involve local architects in the design of our church buildings. Their major function is a place to accommodate the functions of the, the people, the members of the church. Our chapels are not shrines that we worship, but rather meeting houses that we worship in, and we use them as a, a gathering place for our people to learn of the philosophy and the doctrine, the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Mormon church considers itself a layman's church a church of participation, a church in which everyone should contribute to the benefit of all. Members often work side by side, helping to construct or improve their facilities. When you're doing something you really believe in, and when you're doing it with others who feel exactly the same way as you do, it's not really work at all. As a matter of fact, it's fun. And when it's all over, you realize that you have helped to build something that will last forever. That's not bad for an 80-year-old. No, I'm only 79. I know as a young person, as a young man, that the church has 
offered me so much happiness and given to me so much happiness because of the teachings, the principles that are in the church to help me live a clean life. I never anticipated on coming on a mission to serve for the church. I loved rugby and I had never been away from home before. But the feeling inside that I had at that time was so strong that I just knew that I had to come and serve a mission. The Mormon Church has perhaps the most organized and active missionary program in the world. We're calling today, ma'am, as representatives of the Saviour to leave us peace and a blessing inside the homes. These young people spend two years of service working with the people of an assigned area, learning to understand and even guide them. I've had a few of these young people call at my home. So did the people in Noah's time. Maybe they didn't convert me to anything but I couldn't help admiring their politeness and their sincerity. And after a Heavenly Father did place his prophets on the earth... Well, I've been a missionary now for 14 months, and during that 14 months, I can honestly say that I've learnt more than what I have in my whole life. And through these experiences, we grow ourselves. I have great admiration for the Mormon people, for their honesty, their integrity, their enthusiasm, the work of their missionaries, the whole program and activity, especially in terms of their emphasis on family life. I am a uh, member of the Church of England, but I want to emphasize I have great respect for the work which the Mormons do in this country and elsewhere. The Mormon Church come on very strong in their support of the nuclear family and family relationships and time with your family. And uh, they've, they've infiltrated many areas of New Zealand society with this idea. And I personally think that's admirable because I, too, am a great believer in the family unit. My first association with the Mormon Church was uh, during the period of time that I was Minister of Social Welfare in New Zealand. At that time, I became alarmed at the, what we might say, the astronomical increase in the number of women applying for the domestic purposes benefit. I felt that something must be done and done urgently to try and uh, find the cause of these marriage breakdowns and uh, to see if there was something that we could do to overcome them. The first constructive suggestion came from uh, the local president of the Mormon Church. Ben Couch, who is now our Minister of Maori Affairs, came to me and said, look, I'd like to bring a gentleman around to talk to you about the family and he brought round the local president from Wellington at the time. Uh, we talked about family, family evenings that, is, that are operated by the, or run by the Mormon Church. He showed me some one-minute spots for television. The uh, spots were excellent, and they said, we'll start showing them immediately, and they did. They are still being shown, and I might say, highly successful. It was really fun. We play games and open presents, and I got That's this. nice, dear, but could you tell me about it later when my show's over? Doctor, you know they're cold. Daddy, I went to Vicky's party today, and it was really a lot of fun. We played all kinds of games. Oh? We had ice cream. We played I Had a Little Dog here. That's nice, Susie. Do you want to know what I got? Today. Children can go to the dogs when families don't listen. Listening is the beginning of understanding. Good family relationships must lead to a happier family life and uh, fewer problems and fewer family breakdowns. For the Mormons, the most important single unit in the church is the family. The pressures of modern society make it increasingly difficult to fully realize and appreciate the strengths and advantages of strong family ties. Devout Mormons truly believe the most important work they will ever do will be within the walls of their own home, sharing ties of unity, love, respect, and togetherness. 
Every Monday evening, the family comes together to talk, to listen, to learn, and to express their affection for one another. There's nothing better than family home evening to get everybody trying in the same direction. We have family home evening each Monday night and it's an hour of learning about the gospel and it's an hour for the family to be together. If we have any problems or anything, we can discuss this at family home evening. Each one gets an opportunity to take their part. This teaches them leadership. Um, in preparing the lessons, they learn the principles that the church is teaching and with encouragement and correct direction, they'll put these things into their lives and be so much better people for the future. We see the improvement in our children. We see the difference between our children and others. Not that they're as good as they ought to be all the time, but I'm quite confident that they're an awful lot better than they would be if we weren't members of the church and if we weren't holding family home evening. <laughs> the family is the basis of our society. Who got the six? The greatest thing that's ever happened in my life and in the life of my family. I've been very, very happy and I know with all my heart that the church is true. To me, it's the greatest thing that has happened to me in my lifetime. I don't believe there's anything in the whole wide world that could uh, compensate for the way of life that the gospel of Jesus Christ has given me. The greatest influence in my life. I believe the church has the solution to the problems that New Zealand has. We have many great people in New Zealand, and I would like to see those people grow to be real leaders in the world. I'd like to see a finish to all the divisions we see in our country. I'd like to see us become united as, as one people.